I'll provide some background because we have an unusual living arrangement and live 35 minutes apart. I rent a smaller apartment with my twin daughters in high school. Both are allergic to dogs. Our apartment is walking distance to their school. They will both go to university in two years. He rents a bigger condo 35 minutes away for himself and his two big dogs. My apartment is smaller and less comfortable for guests, so he rarely comes over. I usually end up going over to his place for the weekends. My daughters go to their dad's on the weekends. He can't come and stay during that time because his dogs can't come over, and he can't leave them alone for the weekend. This is a source of contention for him because he feels I should stay at his place for a minimum of three nights per week. However, I work, and he tends to be very nocturnal, and every time I stay there, I end up sleep deprived, so I've said I can stay over Friday and Saturday nights, but not on a night when I work the next day. He's currently getting his master's while also working a remote job. He has ADHD and maybe other things that are not diagnosed, but when he gets stressed out slash overwhelmed, he shuts down, unless I'm there. And I'm very willing to help, but it can be hard to work all day, drive to his place, and sit beside him for five hours, then drive back home. I can do that a couple of nights, but I have stuff to do as well. He's really annoyed with me because he says he needs me there every day for the next two weeks until he gets through exams. My issue is he didn't pre-plan this, and I have said I'll go twice through the week but he says that's being short-sighted and selfish because I should be willing to just do whatever it takes to help him get through his exams. I'm so torn. On the one hand, maybe he's right. On the other hand, I find it so frustrating, even though I know it's real because I see it all the time with him, that he can't just work, that he needs me sitting there to body double. I don't experience this issue at all, and I know I should be more empathetic, but it drives me crazy. But since it's important exams and it's short-lived about two weeks, shouldn't I just suck it up and do it? Does the fact that I'm so annoyed by it mean we truly just aren't compatible? We do have plans to live together in about two years once the girls are off to uni, but I'm honestly not even sure anymore. Because of this, this is an ongoing issue with work slash errands slash school work with him. But in this circumstance, it's more pronounced because it's more important. Does anyone with ADHD have any advice? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, needing someone to help him focus is one thing, but acting like it is a duty rather than a massive favor is another thing. If he was thankful, it would be reasonable to think about it and possibly find compromises where his caregiving does not prevent you from having your own life. Likewise, wanting you in the night is one thing, but acting like your sleep doesn't matter is another. If you can drive there and back and he needs help, he should be able to drive to you and survive in a smaller apartment. The dude is entitled, and you either need to set boundaries or leave or you will suffer. Comment two, body doubling is real and not unreasonable. Exam week is on the calendar months ahead of time, and at 40 years old, he should have a better handle on his needs during exam time and arrange this in advance. His lack of planning is not your emergency and trying to manipulate you with his it has to be a woman is gross. Are you sure you want to continue being his emotional support pet, life coach, or nanny? This, plus what you alluded to with other issues, sounds exhausting. He sounds like he uses his problems to control you. Now for the update, thanks for all the comments on my last post. Well, things escalated quickly after that. My boyfriend's exams were looming, and he was getting more and more stressed. He insisted I needed to be there every night, but I stood my ground. I couldn't sacrifice my sleep and sanity, not with my job and the girls' schedules. I thought he'd understand, but boy, was I wrong. One evening, I got a call from him, and he was in pieces. Said he couldn't focus, that everything was falling apart. So I did what I always do. I caved. I drove over thinking I'd stay just for that night to help him out. When I got there, the place was a mess, papers everywhere and he was just staring at his screen, lost. I sat with him, and we worked through the night. I thought it was a one-off, but it wasn't. The next day, he begged me to stay again. Said he couldn't do it without me. I was exhausted, but I agreed. This went on for days, and each day I told myself it was the last time. But it never was. I was running on fumes, and my girls noticed. 
They were worried, asking why I was so tired all the time. But I just brushed it off. I didn't want them to worry about adult problems. Then, one day, I got a call from my ex-husband. He'd heard from the girls that I was burning the candle at both ends and offered to take them for a few extra days. I should have been relieved, but I was angry. Angry that he was stepping in. Angry that I couldn't manage it all. And angry that my boyfriend had put me in this position. But the real kicker came when I found out my boyfriend had been lying to me. He wasn't just overwhelmed with exams. He was also working on a side project that he hadn't told me about. A project that could potentially make him a lot of money, but also one that was eating into his study time. He said he didn't tell me because he wanted it to be a surprise, that he was doing it for us, for our future. But all I felt was betrayal. I was furious, but I didn't have the energy to argue. I just nodded and went back to my routine of propping him up. I told myself it was just until exams were over, that things would get better. But deep down, I knew this was a pattern that wouldn't break easily. Exams finally ended and he passed, thanks to my help, or so he said. He was over the moon and so was I, but for a different reason. I thought now I could go back to my life, to my girls, and to some semblance of normalcy. But life had other plans. The side project my boyfriend had been working on, it took off, big time. Suddenly he was swamped with work. And guess who he needed by his side? Yep, me. He said it was just for a little while longer, that this was our chance to build the life we'd always wanted. I wanted to believe him to believe in us, but I was so tired. I agreed to help again. But this time, I set boundaries. I said I'd only come over three nights a week, no more. He wasn't happy, but he agreed. I thought I was taking control. But in reality, I was just sinking deeper into this cycle of being needed and used. Now, I sit here, writing this, and I can't help but feel like I've accepted a terrible situation without even realizing it. I'm helping him build his dream while mine are on hold. And the worst part, I'm starting to resent him for it. I don't know if this is what love is supposed to be like, but it sure doesn't feel right. Thanks for reading. My boyfriend of seven years thinks he can cheat and lie. But when I find a fancy dinner receipt and catch him flirting at the gym, I dump him and show him what loyalty means. At the beginning of our relationship of seven years, I caught my boyfriend sending a coworker a text saying, love you too, with hard eyes. I immediately asked about it and said I wasn't comfortable with it. I asked him to tell her not to send him those sorts of texts and for him to do the same if we are going to date. He agreed and texted her not to say that to him. She responded with something humorous, playful after. She moved out of state and got married quickly to a guy she met out of state. Since then, I moved out of state with my boyfriend and then back to our home state. There have been a few incidents that have left me fearful he could be cheating, but I don't ever want to assume. While living out of state together, I found sparkly sanitizer and a pink comb in his car. He insisted they were his mom's from a few weeks prior when she visited. I messaged her and asked, and she said they were hers and I could just throw them out. While living there, I was invited to a happy hour with his coworkers, and he introduced me as his girlfriend. Right in front of me, a pretty young coworker was giggling at the table and asked him if he uses Snapchat and to download it and add her. He didn't really think it was weird, but it was so obviously flirting. Then, on the way out of the restaurant, she waved and smiled at him and was playing with her hair. It was very childlike. This was all a few years ago or more. Fast forward to the last year. He kept coming home talking about this very young coworker and all of her hobbies and interests. He mentioned how she surfs, he knows I can't swim and am a bit skittish about the ocean, and invited him to do that sometimes. He would gloat about her a lot. I told him it made me uncomfortable how much he talks about her. Supposedly she quit their job together and still lives somewhere in town, but they don't talk anymore. Now he has another coworker who has the same name as me. She broke up with her boyfriend while working with him and moved out of his home. She came to work apparently crying a lot about it, and my boyfriend let me know she went to him crying about it. My boyfriend is a nice person, so I didn't think much of that. For weeks, he randomly brings up how she is newly single and goes to the gym, trying to put herself out there. I think it's strange he keeps bringing up certain topics with female coworkers. 
knowing it will make me uncomfortable. Yesterday he came home from work later than usual and smelled very strongly of grapefruit. I asked about the smell and he didn't have an answer and switched topics to say he stopped to see his brother before coming home from work. How can I find out if he is cheating? He just has a pattern of talking up female co-workers, making me uncomfortable even when I've told him nicely that it makes me feel that way. I don't know if he just has foot and mouth syndrome and says stuff without thinking, or if he truly doesn't see me as a romantic partner and is secretly seeing other people or exploring other options. Help. Now for a few comments before the update, comment one. So basically for the seven years you've been together, he has openly flirted with other women and you've not really totally trusted him this whole time. And when you try to talk to him about it and explain that it makes you uncomfortable, he keeps doing the same things anyway. Despite repeated examples and efforts on your part, he does not set any boundaries with female colleagues. So why do you think he is willing to change anything now? Comment two, I really need to vent mostly and maybe some advice. He has also told me she was not flirting with me at all. That is just how she is with friends. When I've told him these women flirting in front of me makes me feel bad. I don't know if he's intentionally acting aloof like he doesn't notice the flirting or if he genuinely just doesn't see it. I don't know what to believe, I guess. Now for the update, Thanks for all the comments on my last post. Things have escalated since then, and I'm at my wit's end. The day after he came home smelling like grapefruit, I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was off. I decided to do a little digging. I checked our phone bill for any unusual numbers, and there it was. A number that kept popping up at odd hours. I called it, and guess who answered? The co-worker with the same name as me. My heart sank. She sounded surprised and hung up quickly. When I confronted him, he brushed it off, saying they were just discussing work projects late at night. Who does that? I wanted to believe him, but the next day, I found a receipt for a fancy restaurant in his jacket pocket. The date and time on it were for a night he said he was working late. I felt sick to my stomach. I didn't even have to ask. I knew he wasn't there alone. I didn't say anything to him yet. I needed more proof. The following day, I took a half day off work and drove past the gym he said his coworker frequents. And there they were, laughing together. It wasn't just friendly, it was intimate. I felt like such a fool. I drove home, packed a bag, and left before he got back from his gym session. I stayed with a friend and ignored his calls and texts. He must have known I was onto him because he showed up at my friend's place with flowers and a lame apology. He said it was a one-time mistake, but I didn't buy it. I told him it was over and shut the door in his face. It was the hardest thing I've ever done, but I had to do it for my own sanity. The aftermath was messy. Our mutual friends were shocked and sides were taken. I heard through the grapevine that he was trying to make things work with the coworker, but she wasn't interested in anything serious. I guess he got a taste of his own medicine. I've been focusing on myself, hitting the gym, and reconnecting with old friends. It's been tough, but I'm starting to feel like myself again. I'm not ready to date, but I'm open to the idea of meeting someone who respects me and our relationship. Thanks for reading. My girlfriend's friends blame me for her breakdown after two concussions. But when they spread lies about me being controlling, I expose their secrets and watch them squirm. My partner and I started dating 1.5 months ago, but we've known each other for over a year. In the past few months, she's been badly concussed two times from sports. And she's had cognitive difficulties and some changes in mood and behavior that come after concussions sometimes. It's been hard to navigate, but the recovery has been happening. It's just been slower than anybody is happy with. Anyway, recently, four days ago, she had a severe mental breakdown after smoking Zaza with some friends and went to the ER. Although it seemed like there had been some behavior changes before the smoking, it was like drug-induced psychosis. And as of right now, she hasn't recovered from it. Like her cognitive abilities are so limited and she keeps worrying about unusual things like what color things are. She took a color blindness test and passed it. But the episode from the Zaza really affected her mind. 
The neurologist said it was post-concussive syndrome, and we can expect a standard recovery without any substances. So that's a relief. Of course, her family is freaked out, and so are all her friends. And so am I. I stayed with her in the hospital as long as I possibly could. But when a few of my partner's friends came to visit, they acted so cold to me, like I wasn't in the room. Or when I spoke, it was irritating. They didn't ask me how I was or how my partner was doing, even though I had been there for 12 hours. Not all of her friends treat me like this, just these three specific people. Then, after my partner got discharged and went home, also, we're all in college, they started sobbing together and looking at me like I caused this whole thing, I swear. Like I was the reason it was happening, I don't play sports. I wasn't around when my partner got concussed. Another friend who's more mutual later told me this group of three people had been saying to everyone else that they don't like me. They never talked to me much, even before this happened. I felt vibes from one of them that they didn't like me as soon as me and my partner started dating. But she said it's just their personality and to not take it personally. I believe that until today. Now I just want to know what the heck is happening. I want to be able to cry with them, but they're acting like they hate me. Now I've lost my partner, and I'm alone in it. I miss her so much. It feels like they don't think I even care. Why are they acting like this? I emailed one to ask to talk, and we're going to today. Is there something I'm not seeing? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Are the friends she smoked Zaza with the friends that don't like you? And really, two concussions in that short of a time? Please tell me it wasn't with a club or college, and they didn't get her proper neurological checks. Get rid of the bloody Zaza. She and now her mates have to stop that shoot. And please, I'm not judging about Zaza. Do what you want. It's about someone who's medically unwell taking bloody drugs. Does nobody have a brain cell? They don't have to like you. It's shitty, but that's life. Be a good partner, and you'll be okay. Comment 2. First, what are you all mourning? Second, they don't like you. You need to just accept it. Not everyone is always going to like you. It seems like their feelings about you have nothing to do with your partner's mental health and everything to do with them just not liking you. I'm not really sure what talking to one of them is it going to change. Now, for the update, thanks for sticking around for more of this mess. So, I talked with one of the friends, right? The one I thought hated me the least. We met up at a coffee shop, and it was like sitting across from a judge. They said my partner had been confiding in them about feeling overwhelmed with our relationship. That I was too much, too fast. I was floored. I mean, we've been taking things at a pace we both agreed on. But they said that since the concussions, she's been rethinking everything. And I guess I'm part of that everything. Then, two days ago, my partner's roommate called me in a panic. My partner had disappeared. No note, phone left behind, just gone. We called everyone, searched everywhere, and I was losing my mind. Hours later, we found her at the library, surrounded by art books, crying. She said she needed to remember why she loved colors. It was heartbreaking and confusing. The next day, I found out that one of the friends had been spreading rumors about me, saying I was controlling and that I was the reason for my partner's breakdown. It was like a punch to the gut. I confronted them, and it turned into a full-blown shouting match in the middle of campus. I'm not proud of it, but I was so angry. I felt betrayed by people I thought were my friends, too. But here's where it gets even crazier. That night, my partner's parents showed up unannounced. They sat me down and told me they were taking her out of school, that she needed to be in a different environment to recover. They thanked me for my support, but said it was best if we took a break. Just like that, as if our relationship was nothing. I was a mess, but I had to respect their decision. It's not like I could stop them. So I helped pack up her stuff, and I found a journal. I shouldn't have, but I read it. It was full of love for me, for us. But the last few entries were different. She wrote about feeling lost, not recognizing herself, and not knowing if her feelings for me were real or just a result of her injury. It was like reading the words of a stranger. 
Yesterday, I saw her off. She hugged me, whispered that she was sorry, and that was it. I watched her drive away with her family, feeling like I was in some bad dream. And then, as if I hadn't had enough, I got a text from the friend I had the fight with. They were at the hospital, had gotten into a car accident. I don't know why, but I went. Maybe I'm a glutton for punishment. They were okay, just a few scratches, but they were alone, and I stayed with them. They broke down, apologized for everything, said they were just scared and took it out on me and I wanted to be angry to tell them off, but I couldn't. I forgave them. Maybe I'm weak or desperate, but I couldn't stand to see them in pain, even after everything. So here I am, feeling like I've been through a war. My partner's gone and I'm left picking up the pieces of a life I don't even recognize anymore. I'm trying to move on, but it's hard. I keep thinking about her journal, about the love that might have been real or might have been a casualty of her injuries. I don't know what's next, but I'm trying to find some kind of normal again. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.